Welcome back to the Jackson Neal Sports Podcast here on SoundCloud, Stitcher, iTunes, and YouTube. Basically, wherever you listen to podcasts, this podcast is there. Today, really, really special episode, really cool thing. I'm going to start to get more sports writers as well as sports radio hosts on the show to discuss some news that's happening around around the country in sports. And today I have a really special guest, Kevin Bowen from 1070 The Fan over in Indianapolis is going to join join the podcast to discuss the Indianapolis Colts with Andrew Luck, new coach Frank Reich, their new offensive line, all that great stuff. Then after that, I'm going to be discussing the NBA and is LeBron James still the favorite for MVP? But first, let's get to my conversation with Kevin Bowen. All right, so just what are some of the main headlines you're hearing heading into training camp for the Colts? I mean, certainly everything starts starts with the quarterback, and, and that, that's that been the talk really for the past 19 months around the Colts. And, um, you know, Andrew Luck has gotten back on the field here at training camp, his first team practices since uh, December 2016. And uh, I think that's where everything does begin for this team is the health of the franchise quarterback. You know, he hasn't played in a game since New Year's Day in the 2016 season. So it's been quite a while. And, and, you know, when he's been healthy, I mean, he's been obviously a, one of the better quarterbacks, I think in the league. And then Colts wise, they've gone you know, 11 and five for three seasons and eight and eight, the other two seasons. And he was banged up in those eight and eight seasons as well. So uh, that is the storyline for the Colts here in 2018. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. I mean, he's one of the, like you said, one of the best quarterbacks in the league when healthy. What are you hearing about his availability now heading into the season? Colts expect him to be out there. Uh, they expect him to be out there for the preseason opener um, on August 9th against Seattle, and they certainly expect him to be ready to go September 9th when the Bengals come to Lucas Oil Stadium. And I don't think you have a question of, of you know Luck being ready week one, like just purely him on the sidelines, but it's how effective will he be. That is the question of like, okay, are you going to get a Pro Bowl caliber Luck week one, or are you going to get a guy that has some growing pains that he must get through uh, before he gets back to that Pro Bowl level of play. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I mean, the injury he had was so so unique and kind of rare in his case that we were not really sure what it is, exactly how he's going to bounce back. Personally, what do you think are some reasonable expectations for Luck this season? I think you have to expect some rust. You know, I, I'd almost think you'd be a little bit naive not to think that this is a guy that you know, has barely practiced in the last 19 months. Um, new offense, new personnel, you factor all that in, there's going to be some rust there early in the season. Um, This is a guy that I think, you know, has admitted that so far early on in camp that, you know, the arm strength isn't fully, fully there just yet. So he saw some hurdles to clear. Um, But I think, you know, once you reach maybe, you know, a quarter of the midway point of the season, um, you know, let's not forget, he was a generational quarterback when he was drafted in 2012. And, as long as that shoulder is good and solid and he gets used to, you know, being in more uncontrolled settings and all of that, I think he can get back to being the quarterback everyone thought he was going to be. Mm-hmm. That's what the Colts are certainly hoping for. But one of the big things around Andrew Luck throughout his entire career has been this offensive line, whether he's, he seems to be always one of the most sacked quarterbacks in the league whenever he's healthy. And part of a big reason why he got injured was because the offensive line was has been very spotty throughout his career. What have the Colts done this offseason to improve that line? I mean, they have invested resources really unlike any team in the NFL, to be honest with you. I mean, two picks in the top 40 at the guard spots in Quentin Nelson and Braden Smith. They signed a couple of veteran offensive linemen and Matt Slaws and Austin Howard, who have started a lot of games in the NFL. So they had a committed approach. Chris Bauer, their general manager, admits that he, you know, he did not do a good enough job last year in taking care of the offensive line, and that was a clear focus this year. And the Colts have done that. They have depth in that group. And Chris Bowden even calls it a strength. And that's something we certainly would not have said about the offensive line in years past. So we'll see how well those guys can mesh together. And if that can be a unit, um, that is certainly better uh, than what we've seen the past couple of seasons. Certainly, certainly. The Colts, the Colts really need that in terms of protecting Luck now that he's finally back health back to be relatively healthy and hopefully play out the rest of this the entire season without getting injured again. Going over to the defensive side, that's another spot where the Colts have kind of been hot or cold in recent years. What is the defense looking like heading into 2018? It's a totally new scheme. Uh, the, the Colts will play a, in a 4-3 scheme this year. They were a 3-4 team under Chuck Pagano and um, 
they want to get quicker. They want to be more sideline to sideline. They want to be, you know, I think more athletic and just a defense predicated on speed. So um, they've undergone a significant change uh, in personnel as well as schematically. And it was a unit that did okay against the run last year, but struggled in playmaking, struggled in getting after the quarterback. Uh, but it's definitely an unknown. You know, there's a lot of linebackers. Uh, those spots look to be up for grabs. The secondary is very young, has some talent. Um, and the front, it's just a question of, you know, can these guys play in this scheme, especially in the interior? So it's a very unproven unit on that side of the ball. Mm-hmm. And the Colts also got a new coach this offseason, Frank Reich, somebody front with some Eagles ties over here in the Philadelphia market. Um, just looking at him as a, as a coach, how old do you think he's been? He's gotten to be adjusted to this team? Yeah, I think he brings some innovation, some creativity that I know you guys, you know, in that market saw full well um, last year, and that was, I think, really needed for this offense. He needed a jolt, and I thought at times the Colts were a little bit lacking on that side of the ball and their creativity and how innovative they were. And I think Wright definitely brings that. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he balances the play calling and the head coaching duties, you know, similar to Doug Peterson in Philly as well. So um, he gives you, I think, a little bit of, of an advantage now X and O wise that you didn't have under Chuck Pagano. And I think that'll be the biggest thing that Colts fans um, feel like was a reason why they were four and 12 last year. They just didn't have that advantage from a coaching standpoint. And uh, we'll see if Wright can uh, change that script this, uh, this season. Yeah, Frank Reich is certainly a pretty awesome coach. I mean, we figured out that figured that out with the Eagles. That was a pretty awesome season. He he helped us go to. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think you know, obviously, it was a crazy process with Josh McDaniels and that coaching situation for the Colts. But uh, I think fans are pretty pleased with the hire of Frank Reich. And you know, he was an assistant here for several seasons. Kind of got his coaching start in Indianapolis, and uh, we'll see if uh, you know he can get this team back to being kind of a perennial playoff team like you know most of this fan base has been used to over the last 20 years yeah definitely Colts fans should definitely be excited and now just what do you think are the best and the worst case scenarios as of right now for this Colts team in 2018 you know I think best case is you are a team that can you know maybe compete for a wild card spot you know it's a very tough division and there's a lot of questions outside of Andrew Luck you're without your two starting safeties early in camp as well Malik Hooker and Clayton Heather. So, um, you know, that would be best case. And worst case, I think, would obviously be, you know, Andrew Luck just isn't healthy or ha- hits some sort of roadblock and doesn't come back and yeah, as a quarterback everybody thought he could be. And it's a team that's, you know, drafted in you know, the top five or top ten for a second straight season. So I think the division is pretty tough. And I think a season right around 500 with a healthy Andrew Luck, that has to be viewed as a win uh, for, the, for the Colts. A big thank you to Kevin for coming on to the podcast. Remember, go check out all of his stuff for 1070 The Fan over there in Indianapolis. Listen to him on the radio if you're over in that area. Check out his stuff on their website and follow him on Twitter at KBowen1070. He's a really awesome guy to talk to. Now, I just want to transition over to the NBA where I saw this recently where people still consider, and it's been considered by many, that LeBron James is the favorite to win the MVP heading into this upcoming season. And this one list I saw, I think it was from ESPN, it you know, had LeBron James up there, Kyrie Irving, uh, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Kevin Durant, and f- some familiar faces. And as of right now, looking at this upcoming NBA season, I don't know if you can consider LeBron to be the clear favorite to win MVP. Because while I think he's the best player, and I think that there's really not one, no one on his level as of right now. I think he's on a tier of his own at this point. The MVP honors, in order to do that, there needs to be some success for the team and reaching almost some, some new heights. And for the Lakers and LeBron this upcoming season, well, I think they're going to do much better. They're going to do obviously do much better than they did last year. I think I expect them to make the playoffs. I expect them to get kind of a mid a mid range seed. I don't expect them to do all that much in the playoffs because this Lakers team just is not built for that. They have some young guys. They have these veterans now. And while it's an interesting squad, just look at the West. We we all know the Warriors have five All Stars on their team. The Rockets are still really, really good. Looks like they're going to add Carmelo Anthony. Um, 
And there's just, um, other than that, after those two top teams, a murderer's row of all these other teams with talent, talented players, young guys, up-and-coming guys, teams like the Timberwolves, the Pelicans with Anthony Davis. There's still the Trailblazers over there with that backcourt. There's a lot, a lot of really, really uh, good teams in the West. And while I think LeBron James won't win this MV- win the MVP this year, is simply because he's not going to achieve the success needed in the postseason to reach that goal. And he's not going. And in the regular season, he's not. The Lakers are not going to have the the record to back it up as well. It's going to be this combination of both of those things where it's just not going to happen. Well, I think he's going to be incredibly valuable to his team. I look at somebody like Kyrie Irving on the Boston Celtics, a team where he, um, a, a, a team where they're going to do very well. I expect them to win the East, and he's going to be the best player on them. Presumably, unless Gordon Hayward is all of a sudden uh, a thousand times better after his injury, which I don't expect. So, looking at maybe not necessarily who should win the MVP honors, because when it gets down to who should win the MVP honors, I, I will make the case that LeBron James for the past eight seasons or so really hasn't been a year where he should not have won that award. Because if you look at the teams where he's taken to the playoffs, how much he's impacted them, he's the most valuable player hands down. But how the award is handed out, I see Kyrie Irving as the clear front runner. Where even somebody like James Harden, he's going to be going up against the Warriors. The Warriors aren't going to have the MVP award winner because there's five All-Stars on the court to start the game. That they just can't. You can't reach that level of one player standing out above the rest. The Thunder, I don't think, are going to be good enough for Russell Westbrook. I think I think James Harden and Kyrie Irving kind of have this this clear race for it. Where I think LeBron should win it. There really hasn't been many years where I think he shouldn't. It's going to go to either Kyrie Irving or James Harden. I'm calling it now. Because they have the combination of teams who are going to perform very well and they're going to be the best player with the biggest name and the biggest face on those teams. Where when the Boston Celtics do really well and win the East and have that ama- have the amazing record and get the number one seed and go far in the playoffs, we're going to look at Kyrie Irving as the best player on that team. With the biggest name, as the biggest name on that team as well. When the Rockets do really well, get the number two seed against the Warriors, have a great playoff series against them but still lose and don't go to the finals, basically similar to this year, James Harden's going to be the name we look at for that Rockets team. I just don't think LeBron James is going to have the success of the Lakers in year one that's going to allow him to get that award, which I think is unfortunate. I think it's misjudged, but in terms of how the award is usually given to players, I just don't see LeBron James winning it this year. I don't think he's in the right situation to be able to achieve that that um that award. And with that, that I'll wrap up this edition of the Jackson Neal Sports Podcast. Really, really enjoyed doing this episode. Remember, check out Kevin Bowen's stuff on 1070 The Fan in Indianapolis. Follow him on Twitter at KBowen1070. Really fun guy to talk to about the Colts. Gonna be trying to get more sports. Writers, sports radio personalities on the show from around the country discussing some of the biggest issues and headlines in sports right now. Uh, I think that would really be awesome for this podcast. I'll still, I'll still do my normal discussion, talking about giving my thoughts on, on sports issues, but I want to get some other people on the pod as well. Remember, you can find this as well as the Jackson Neal Music Podcast updated. I'm going to go with, let's say, for each of them two times a week, two or three times a week each, right here on SoundCloud, Stitcher, iTunes, and YouTube. Also, in the same exact podcast feed as those two, as the sports and music podcast, is the Anything Goes to Jackson Neal podcast, where I interview musicians. That gets updated weekly. The next episode is going to be next Wednesday. My latest episode features a bureaucratic and the London R&B duo Temptress. Two really amazing interviews. Go check that out if you have the opportunity as well. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at JacksonNeal20 for more snippets of interviews, from links to podcasts, my thoughts, everything like that. I think I posted a cat picture on uh, Instagram a couple weeks back. So if you want to look, look at my cat, go follow me on Instagram there, at JacksonNeal20. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you all next time.